I got a fucked up toe. You ever gone on a train in New York? There's always that homeless guy that's got everything. Oh, yeah. I got herpes. I got hepatitis C. I'm deaf in one ear. I got shot in the leg. (laughs) Just give me a quarter. And he smells like piss. Oh, he smells terrible. Yeah. In the old days, I used to have a friend in Miami that was a fucking door guy. He had a Puerto Rican girlfriend. I got along with him and her. And one day we were talking about Canada. And she just told me right out, if you want to go to Canada, I'll get you into Canada. So I got a call from Roger Paul, mm-hmm. and he goes, that club wants you to go up there for Roger two Paul, weeks. I remember Roger Paul. Holy that shit. club wants you to go up there for two weeks at the Comedy Wood. Uh-huh. It paid shit. You oh, lived yeah. on top of a bar one week, and you stayed in his brother's basement the other, and his brother drove hookers at night. He'd wake you up in the middle of the night. I got a hooker. We just got shot. She wants to know if you want a half price on a job. You know what I'm saying? She's got, she's got an extra hole. Yeah. Fucking crazy <laughs> shit. But you know what? Toronto was a beautiful fucking city. It's weird how they were way advanced in 97, 98. They already had a delivery service for weed. Well, I remember uh, I remember when the, the Chronic Tour came through Toronto in like 2000 or 99. And uh, I used to sell weed back then. <laughs> And uh, I went and hooked up Warren G with some weed that night. You a DJ? No, I, I was no, I was still D- yeah, I was doing comedy. I was DJing, but I was I used to sell a little weed to make some money on the side. So he wanted weed, and I was like, I got you. I took him to the weed spot. Yeah, Canada at that time had a girl that came up to me at the comedy club the first night. And she gave me a number, and she goes, "If you got want weed, they think it's thirty, it's thirty five dollars." I could be wrong, but I, I went and did that uh, the smoke the weed room, the little one, right in Toronto, and I'm yeah. I'm blanking on the name, but the woman who owns it, Puff Mama, told me that was her. Probably, she is probably. She, I've like, never done the that. Waitress room. at the comedy at the comedy club or something. I don't at know. Comedy Wood, maybe. I don't know. I don't know comedy what. Wood was up at uh, Young and Steel's. Yes. Yeah, Young and Steel's. And I used to walk over to Blount Street, Bloor Street, Bloor, and that was the best, second best strip club. <laughs> I've ever been at What was the first life. best? The one in Jersey, the one that you could stick a bottle in the chick's pussy. Oh, yeah. See, you, you go to, you, if you go just outside out. the city in Toronto yeah. and you go to a strip joint, yeah, you, any, anything goes. Are you serious? Anything goes. Because that Bloor Street, everything went. What we used to do is I, I, when I first started getting money and I was living here and I would go home every now and then, I had a fucking big fucking pocket full of money. I was young. I had a hard dick and, and no fucking dependents. <laughs> so we would go to the landing strip right by the airport and I would get all my friends and we would get the VIP room, which is about the size of this place, with two couches in it. And there'd be like eight of us, and we'd get 16 chicks in there. <laughs> and I would call it Vajenga, because it was just <laughs> pussy everywhere in every angle. <laughs> you know, she's sucking off your friend over there, your finger in a while. She's sucking off your friend. <laughs> my friend, my friend's disgusting. making out with this one chick and squeezing her tits. And I'm fingering her from the back. And, and uh, he goes, so what's your name? She goes, Marisa. And he goes, get the fuck off me. That was his mom's name. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god fucking strip clubs what a disgusting i know now i call them wantstitutes it's it's <laughs> it's like i got out of them early like i got out of them early my boxing coach took me to a strip club for the first time in like 87 the night of the Hagler hearns fight Hag no Hagler leonard fight Jesus 86 Christ. was that 86 86 or 87 something like that yeah my boxing coach took me and I was I was I looked I looked like a child in Toronto yeah just outside of Toronto how old were you I was 16 no it, ID no no none. ID just nothing walked in yeah walked in I sat down and we we're gonna watch the Hagler Leonard fight and he paid the 10 bucks cover to get us in because it was on closed circuit TV back then and uh and I was just I'd never seen naked women before in my life I just sat there fucking like completely amazed. They're spreading wide open. I was like, this is incredible. And then the they never got the fight. So people start throwing bottles and, and rioting in the place. But I didn't even notice because I was just staring at this chick on stage. <laughs> There's bottles flying over my head. I don't hear nothing. My coach sneaks out. He he leaves to go to another bar to go watch the fight. I turn around. There's barely anybody left in the club. I walk out and they give me $10 on the way out. They'll get nobody the money back. So I got the $10 and I walked back in the club from the front, <laughs> looked at some more pussy, and I got another $10 on the way out. And then uh, I remember I just jogged home and I remember being so happy. <clears throat> and I remember when I jerked off that night, I could have fucking stuccoed my ceiling. It was incredible. Oh, yeah, you leave those places oh wound up, God. though. 
you walk home fast. Oh, yeah. You I jogged like it was fast. nothing. Oh, it was about God. a three, four mile jog, but I didn't feel nothing. Your dick gets hot at that age. Oh, yeah. You see it and you yeah. just get. You, I remember one time I had this. In fact, my mother was still alive. So I had to be around 15, 14. And I had one of those bag jacks that, you know, the, the sperm don't come out. Right. Like you got so. Like something happened, like a chick showed you a tit. Blue balls? It's like, it's ri- there's something because my ball swole up. Oh, I, I never I, had that. I didn't know who to ask. <laughs> so I woke my mother up at like six in the morning when she was hung over. It's like, what do you want? I'm like, Ma, look at my nuts. Is there something wrong with them? And she's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Did you ask her in Spanish? Huh? You ask her in Spanish? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget. She was asleep with her head. Can you just say it in Spanish the way you asked her? Me, I got to look at it because it was dark in the room. Right. I go, my well, I eat. And she got up and she looked at it all weird. She goes, ah, no sense. Well, at least I'm up in medical. <laughs> and whenever you said doctor to me, mm-hmm. whatever ailment I had went away. Yeah. <laughs> you just busted a nut That's right there. That's all you got to say to me <laughs> is doctor. And the ailment goes away magically. It's That's fucking me. crazy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like going to the doctor. You're like my daughter with even medicine. At, even at this age, I don't like going to the doctor. My daughter will not take I medicine. go. He's a great guy. I love him to death. When I, I bring an iPod, because if they're going to draw blood, I got to bring an iPod. I get mobile blood draws at my house. I did one today. They come to your house? Yeah, they come to my house and do it. Oh, Jesus Christ. And what do you lay on your bed? No, nah, I just <laughs> sit at the dining table, give them my arm, they take it. And what care. do they do with the blood? They take it, they ship it back to where they got to ship it to. And... Oh, you do that like a physical at the house? Yeah, well, I do, the, I do these like every three months, the mobile blood. They come and take blood. Check Why do on, you do that? Just to make sure I'm all right. So you do the checks. You yeah. don't do it for the other reason. Nah, no, nah, it's still for the See, checks. See, I do it for the fucking changing of the oil. Yeah, well, you I gotta change the oil and make new blood. That's where the party starts. Oh yeah. You go sit in the Novator mm-hmm. bed. You get a fucking pint taken out, and you go sit in the Novator bed. Throw, get some Chinese guy to throw a couple needles in you. Mm-hmm. You get some new blood cells. That's why women don't die of heart attacks because they bleed every month. Mm-hmm. We're the only assholes that die of heart attacks because we don't bleed it out. But if we change that blood every six or seven months. You'd be tip top Magoo. That's why Keith Richards is still alive. Yeah. All those blood well, transfusions. A lot, a lot of needles in it. <laughs> a lot of fucking needles. A lot of but needles. But you got to be willing to do that shit. Take a pint out every 60 days. I could do that. What do they if replace you, it with? New blood? No, but you, your body forces you. You go to Morton's, you get a steak, get the garlic mashed potatoes, <laughs> get the chocolate cake. And <laughs> I'll see you on Wednesday. Just go home and let the fucking body recover. I'm going to do you that. You get up and you start from scratch. I'm going to do that. That's how they get. They only take little fucking vials. They only took four of these <coughs> today. You feel it? Nah. You feel like nice. fainting at all? Nah, I'm not sensitive like they that. They put it in the pump. They got the. They nah, they just, they just stick it in and just start shooting out. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> they, they find go. the vein, they go. After after Portland, I got to start going down there. Like December is my kill your insurance money month. <laughs> We're going in like fucking Marines. Do you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.